But right now, we want to talk about object communications. And object communications, let's go back to talk about what we did in CSA. We often did stuff like this in CSA where we had some class, public class, and the favorite one I used was dog. And then we had some private properties or attributes of the dog, and the three that we typically had were string, name, these are all private, by the way. And then we had uh, private int age. And then the last one we had was private double weight. I think those were the three properties we typically had. Now, it is true that name is a string, and string is an object, uh, a class, and so name is an object te technically. But one of the things we didn't really do a lot of in CSA is put one object inside the other. I mean, here that's, we sort of did, but this is kind of a simple concept. What we want to talk about today is what happens when complicated objects are stuck inside one another? How do they communicate with each other? That's the, that's the topic for today. So let's talk about an example. <clears throat> let's say we have a class that models the human body, right? So here is the human body. Like that, right? So we have a class that models the human body. And imagine that we have another class that models the brain. So there's the brain, right? And then we have another class that models the heart, right? Like that, OK? So imagine that there's a class that models the body, another class that models the brain, and another class that models the heart. And imagine that um, some tiger has shown up over here, right? There's a tiger. My daughter's a graphics artist, but she obviously didn't get the genes from me. Anyway, so let's say the tiger shows up, and the body uh, senses some danger, informs the brain, and tells the brain, hey, there's danger. And then the brain sends a message to the heart saying, hey, you've got to start beating faster. And then the brain also sends a message back to the body saying, hey, you've got to start sweating because there's danger out there. How would this, on a practical level, take place inside Java? Like, how would the objects communicate with each other, et cetera? So we're going to work through this today. I'm going to do it for you on uh, either BlueJ or IntelliJ. Probably for speed reasons, I'll just use IntelliJ. Uh, sorry, BlueJ. But I would like you now to take out your computers and start a whole new project here and call it um, Object Communications Project. And we're going to talk about how all this communication is going to take place. OK, so I've opened up BlueJ here, and I've created these four empty classes, one to represent the body, one to represent the brain, one to represent the heart, and then this tester class that's going to contain our main method. So let's look inside the body class. I've emptied this out. And what I want to know is, what objects should I put in here? Mr. Amrani, sir, what should I put in here? Something like that. OK, so we have the qualifier, we have the class, and then we have the variable name. And then over here, what else would we need? Mr. Schulson, what else would we need, sir? Now, I have a question for you. Have I actually created a heart and a brain here? No. What do I need to do to create a heart and a brain, Mila? I need to create a constructor. Where would be a good place to put that constructor? Should I put it right here like this? Like that? Where should we put it? OK, we need to put it in our own constructor. Very good. So we're going to go public body. And inside here, we're going to say my heart equals new heart. And my brain equals new brain. Now we're starting to flesh this out, literally. We're trying to put the objects inside each other. We're trying to create the objects, et cetera. And we're going to say that the body has the ability to detect some danger. So we're going to create a method that, cre uh, that detects danger. And so we'll say public uh, void uh, sense danger like that. And what this sense danger method is going to do is it's going to alert the brain that danger is being sensed. OK? So we're going to call a similar method on the brain. So we're going to call the brain's sense danger method. How do I call, how do I communicate with my brain? 
How, how do I call a method on it? That's my question. It's a very simple question. Mr. Ajoji, sir, can you tell me how would, if, if the brain had a similar method called sense danger, how would the body call the brain's sense danger method? Very good, sir. My brain got sense. Okay. Uh, and so this is, this is for starters now. And also the body will have the ability to sweat. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another variable, private Boolean is sweating. And when we first are born, we won't be sweating. But eventually, if we are told by the brain to sweat, then we will start sweating. Uh, so I'll say um, uh, public void uh, Boolean sweating. And then I'll just say, is this dot is sweating, sweat, sweating equals sweat, sweating. And just to be consistent, if I'm going to use the this here, I should probably just use it everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to tell the brain, the brain's going to turn around and tell me that I need to start sweating and it'll just set this to true and I'll sweat if it wants me to stop sweating it'll call this uh sweating with a false and then I'll stop sweating everyone understand what's going on so far do you think it's easier or hard for us to access the brain it's pretty easy right we have the variable right here and we can just call methods on it because we have a handle to it right here this is known as a handle to the brain see that right okay now it's getting going to get a little bit more complicated because the brain needs to also talk back to the body and the brain also needs to talk to the heart you see that right the brain needs to be able to tell the heart to beat faster and the brain also needs to tell the body to start sweating so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the other two classes we're going to add the brain and the heart class and let's start off with the easier heart class And I'm going to put in an integer variable, int called uh, heart rate, like that. And I'm going to uh, create a set, ver a set method for the heart rate. So I'm going to go public void set heart rate, int new rate. Uh, I'll just call it rate. And then I'll just say this dot heart rate equals rate like that okay so uh, someone can basically change the heart rate by uh just telling us what the rate should be and just for completeness i will also create a get heart rate method which will return the, the current heart rate in case anybody wants to ask us what our heart rate is like that any questions so far? Okay, now it's going to get more tricky because we're going to do the brain class next. And what's tricky about that is that the heart, you see the heart, it just kind of receives instructions. See that, right? But the brain not only receives instructions, but it only also gives instructions. So we're going to have to try and figure out how to do that. So let's go to the brain now. And the first thing we need to write for the brain is we need to write this sense danger method that is being called by the body when it senses danger. So let's write that public void sense danger like that. And who remembers everything that we need to do when we sense danger? I talked about it at the beginning of the exercise. Mr. Marriott, can you name one thing we have to do, sir, when the brain is told that there's danger? We need we want the heart to beat faster so what i what i want to do here is i want to tell the heart to beat faster do i have any way right now to communicate with the heart look over here do you have access to the heart in any way i don't right so this is today's lesson what we need to do is we need to establish a handle to the heart so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say heart heart and when the brain is born, public brain, 
I need to pass something in the constructor of the brain. What do I need to pass? Mr. Moises, what do I need to pass, sir? Heart. I need to pass the heart. Yes, sir. Uh, could we not make it private? <clears throat> so this needs to be private. Is that what you're asking? That was just a mistake on my part. Okay, so now we need to pass the heart here. So we're gonna go heart H like that, and then we're gonna say this dot heart equals H like that. And once we have our heart established, now we can figure out what the current heart rate is, and we can, let's say we want the heart to beat 20 beats faster than what it's currently beating at. What code would I put in here to increase my heart rate by 20. Uh, let's see here. Mr. RS5, sir, I want to increase my heart rate by 20. What do I do? Like that. And that will cause the uh, heart to beat faster. Like that. Okay. Now, you see here when the brain is first born, it has to be told what the heart is. Who's the only other class that knows this information? Mr. Frenovic? The body. Let's go back to the body. And now, what should I change here, sir? So look at the heart constructor and look at the brain constructor. And now look at my calls for the two. I need a parameter here. What do I need to pass here, sir? So how do I do that? Like that. See what's happening, right? Question for you. Could I swap these two calls like that? Will it work right now like this? Will it work? Mr. Mariak, you're shaking your head no, sir. Why is that? So what's going to be passed if I do it in this order? What value will be passed here, sir? Null will be passed. So that's no good. So I need to create the heart before I pass it. So it has to be in this order. There will, and we're going to talk about that at the end of today's lecture because that's the last thing I'm going to show you how to handle. We're going to have two lungs, and they both need to know about each other. And then you get into this circular problem where one has to be created before the other, and I'll show you how to deal with that. So now I create the heart, and I tell the brain about the heart. You see that, right? I tell the brain about the heart. And so now when the brain is born, it's told about its heart. And what did I do wrong here? Oh, uh, this, I should have a, uh, this should be int. Please fix that in your code if you didn't already. Okay. So now we have all this established. Now, when we, when the brain senses danger, not only do we have, make the heart beat faster, I mentioned there was one other thing that the brain has to do or send a message to. Who has not helped me yet? Mr. Nikita, sir, do you remember what's the other thing we have to do? The brain has to send a message? Has to send one more message, sir. Do you remember? No? Mr. Mulcahy, sir, do you remember? It tells the body to start sweating. Do I have a handle to the body? Can I talk to the body? The body owns me. I'm inside the body. Look here. See the body here, here I am inside the body. Right now, do I have a way to talk to the body? I don't, do I? I need a handle to the body. How do I add a handle to the body here, Mr. Ben? What do I do here? Like that. And once I have the body handle, now I can go body dot, uh, what was it called? Start sweating, S set sweating. All 
like that. Okay, we'll talk in a minute about how this gets set, but where is this body going to get passed? Where is it going to get passed, Ben? In the constructor, so it's going to get passed here again. And here I'm going to say this dot body equals B. And now, when we call the heart construct brain constructor, see it's already complaining because the constructor doesn't match anymore. I need to pass this body's handle or pointer. Should I just put here like body? What should I put? Yes, Miss Mila? The this pointer. So we saw various uses for the this pointer in CSA. We saw how it could be used to transfer control in a constructor, how it could be used to call a method that belongs to the current um, uh, object, how we can specify if there's confusion between a local variable and a state variable, how can we can use the word this. Here's another use of the word this, where basically this, it means me. It says, this is, this is the address of me, my, my body. It, this is how you can contact me at this address. So that's what we're passing. So now when the brain gets created, it's told what its heart organ associated with it is and also who the owner of the heart of the brain is, the, which body owns this brain, this one right here. And so now we've established a two-way communication where the body can call methods on the brain and the brain can call methods on the body. And just to be consistent, I should put the word this here also, like that. And now the whole thing has finally come together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compile and make sure everything's OK. And I want you now to create the tester main method, create a body, sense the danger and see if everything is happening correctly and just to make sure everything's happening correctly we're going to add some debugging statements in here so that we can follow the flow of what's going on so first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to go system out print ln i am sweating and here i'm going to put body senses danger and then over here i'm going to say i'm just cleaning this up a little bit okay i'm just putting these um uh deep print statements in so that we can just follow along with what's happening i would like you now to go ahead and write the main method for tester and try everything out and see if it works. Okay, that's it. So let's run it and see if it all works. You can see that the body sensed the danger. Oh, we forgot to set the heart rate. Okay, so in the constructor for the heart, We should set the heart rate to some value. What would be a good resting heart rate? 60, maybe for an Olympic runner. All right, 65. Put that, let's try it again. Okay, so body senses danger. The heart rate is increasing from 65 to 85, and the body has started sweating. So I want you to look at this structure now and understand how the information is being passed from one object to another, and how when we create the objects, we initialize the constructors, I'm sorry, we call the constructors by passing parameters to everything that it needs to talk to. So now, I have one last thing to show you here before we declare victory. We're going to add a lung class. So let's look over here and add a lung. 
so we'll go lung and um inside the body we're going to have two lungs we're going to have a left lung and a right lung so we're going to go private lung left lung and we're going to go private lung right lung like that and we're going to say furthermore that the two lungs communicate with one another to stay in sync okay so we, we don't know what method they call but they're going to like the left lung will occasionally want to talk to the right lung and the right lung will occasionally want to talk to the left lung so in here uh we're going to in our lung class let's create the lung class here we're going to create a private variable that's a handle we're going to say private lung other lung okay and uh we're going to call uh we'll, we'll create a method called breathe so we'll go um we'll go uh public void breathe uh, something like that and what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll also tell the other lung that we're breathing uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll call we'll call breathe on the other lung so we'll go this dot other lung breathe like that okay so maybe the brain will tell one lung to breathe and it'll tell the other lung to breathe or something like that so each lung will have access to the other lung but now we have a little problem. Let me show you what the problem is. So in the body, we're gonna create the two lungs and we're gonna tell them about each other. So let's come over here. I'll do this right up front. We'll say this dot left lung equals new lung. And it needs to know about what? What does the left lung need to know? It needs to know about the right lung. So we're going to go right lung. And the other lung, this dot right lung, new lung. And it needs to know about the left lung. Can anyone see a problem here? Yes, sir. That's the wrong way to do it. Um, so Ben is saying, should we create an object that can see both lungs? That's the wrong way to do it. I'm going to show you the right way to do it here in a minute. But first, I want to know what's wrong with this. First of all, let me fix the lung constructors. Uh, we need to have a lung constructor here, public lung, uh, lung other. And we're going to say uh, this dot other lung equals other like that okay and now what i want to know is now you'll notice that everything will compile so is it all going to work what's wrong there's something wrong here mr franovic what's wrong sir okay and it doesn't matter which one we create first like here the left lung is being created do i know the right lung handle yet no so what's being passed to the left lung What's this value being passed? No. Null. So that's no good. You see that, right? Would it help if I swap these two statements? Same problem. You see that, right? So when this happens, when you have this circular situation where two objects need to know about each other, what you should consider doing is taking it out of the constructor. So let me show you what you do instead. um probably it's unlikely unless they do a lung transplant on you it's probably not going to happen uh we probably should make this final but uh, not really relevant to today's uh uh lesson okay so now i've changed it moved it out of the constructor and into a method and now i need you to rewrite the body code here in the constructor to make it work please Mr. Orespaev, are you all finished, sir? Okay. Sir, so can you tell me how I should rewrite this code? Like that. Now, there's a danger here that someone might come along and put code right here. Do you see that danger? Like right here. So we don't want that. So 
we want to do something like that to tell the the the, the, the person who's going to be editing this code don't insert anything in between here it would have been better if we could have done it in the constructor but there was no way to do so okay so that is my little lesson for you today on object communications and all i need is for you to either demo to me or mr millen this thing working not not the lung business but just the other stuff have it working and then we're going to declare victory and then we're going to take a 5 minute break before we talk about a controversial topic called singletons.